Hello everyone. So today we'll be talking about stretch reflex. In this video, we'll be covering reflex arc, monosynaptic reflex, polysynaptic reflex, alpha gamma coactivation, or Jurassic manner, inverse stretch reflex, or Golgi tendon reflex. All or all of these topics are very important exam point of view and very interesting also. So let's get started. Okay. So to know uh, this video completely, we should know what reflex is. So reflex is an involuntary response to any stimulus, right? Whenever a stimulus is applied, automatically an involuntary response occurs. That response is called reflex. Okay, so uh, reflex will be occurring when reflex arc will be intact. Okay, so reflex, what is reflex arc? So this is reflex arc in which there are all the, it includes all the neural pathway involved, right? So how? So first of all, whenever there is any stimulus, First of all, there will be receptor to sense that stimulus, right? And there will be nerve endings which carry the impulse called afferent nerve endings or afferent fibers, okay? They uh, enter some coordinating center. It can be any part of CNS. It can be spinal cord or it can be higher centers, okay? From where the motor fibers emerge. And those fibers which basically carry back the impulse are efferent fibers which basically synapse on effector uh, it can be a muscle group or it can be other tissues so basically reflex arc is having the components of reflex arc are receptor efferent some coordinating center efferent and effector so this is reflex arc now we should know type of reflex so basically depending on synapse involved Reflex can be divided in two types, monosynaptic reflex and polysynaptic reflex. Monosynaptic reflex, when only one synapse is involved, it's for example, deep tendon reflexes. For example, knee jerk reflex, bicep jerk or tricep jerk, or tricep jerk reflex, supinator reflex, okay. So all these are monosynaptic reflexes, fine. Polysynaptic reflex, withdrawal, for example, withdrawal reflex, okay. So one by one, we'll study both of these. So let's get started. Monosynaptic reflex first of all. So as name shows monosynaptic. For example, we are here explaining only knee jerk reflex. Okay. So knee jerk. What that mean? So first of all, a stimulus via knee hammer is given on tendon of the quadricep muscle. Okay. So uh, quadricep muscle tendon is being stretched because of this stretch. So here stretch is a stimulus. Fine. So there are fibers which carry fibers which carry this stretch. There are stretch receptors, which is the receptor part, and the receptor here, receptor part of muscle is called muscle spindle. Okay, from where the efferent nerve endings emerge, which carry the impulse. Okay, in form of impulse, the nerve impulse. Okay, the stretch is carried uh, by efferent nerve endings to the coordinating center. So here, they directly synapse on the motor fibers that is called efferent fibers in spinal cord. Okay, so only one synapse is involved. That's why it's called monosynaptic reflex. So these motor fibers, they synapse on muscle and contraction of that muscle cord, this is effector. Okay, so now you know this is reflex arc and what is stretch? Stretch is stimulus, stretch receptor sense that which is muscle spindle and again, Ultimately, the effector is muscle, which is to be contracted in response to this stretch. Okay, so this is monosynaptic reflex. Now, to know it completely, we should know what is this receptor part, muscle spindle. Okay, so if you want to know reflex, that is monosynaptic reflex, we should know what is muscle spindle, which are the fibers which carry these impulses and which are the fibers which carry back these impulses. Okay, so let's see what is muscle spindle. So muscle spindle is receptor organ of a muscle, okay, which is basically sensing the stretch, fine. So you should know structure of muscle spindle, which includes one, as you can see this dark red colored, this is extra fusal fibers, two type of fibers are there, extra fusal fibers and inside you can see intra fusal fibers, okay. So basically who carry the impulse and from where it emerge, what are the efferent nerve endings? So as you can see here, the efferent nerve endings are emerging from intrafusal fibers. Fine. And you can see the 
there are some efferent fibers also coming to intrafusal fibers we'll see it later let's see so if we zoom the same image you can see here that there are some efferent nerve endings which are coming from intrafusal fibers okay and these are the extrafusal muscle fibers fine so as you can see there are efferent which are some efferent are basically innervating the extrafusal fibers also and some are innervating the intrafusal fibers also okay so we should know which type of fibers are these okay now let's see so this is the same image showing intrafusal fibers okay this here this is extrafusal part fine so intrafusal fibers as you can see these are of two type okay one is nuclear bag fibers which is having a dilated portion at center and nuclear chain tube likes which are tube like structures fine these are two type of fiber if you can remember these are basically sensing two things one is the static component of any muscle contraction and one is dynamic component of any muscle contraction what that mean is basically static component is when a muscle contract with a equal or regular rate of contraction right if the rate is not regular irregular rate of contractions the, the same difference between velocity and acceleration the same difference is for muscle contraction we use static and dynamic component okay so nuclear chain and bag fibers are basically playing both the role fine so coming to who carry the impulse who carry the signal that is afferent so basically in muscle spindle which is a receptor organ the two type of afferents are there one is 1a type 1a and type 2 fiber okay these two carry the impulse from muscle spindle so these the muscle spindle is a receptor which is nothing but nuclear bag and nuclear chain fibers when uh, the afferent nerve endings are 1a and 2 okay these go to the uh, spinal cord and synapse directly on alpha motor neuron fine so basically as you can see in the last image so this is alpha motor neuron which is basically synapsing on uh, the extrafusal fiber so how basically muscle contraction occur is whenever there is stretch whenever there is stretch of intrafusal fibers the afferent nerve endings which are type a 1a and 2 fibers they stimulate the alpha motor neuron which lead to contraction of extrafusal fibers okay so this should be very clear but along with that so how basically muscle contraction occur is intrafusal fibers what is the stimulus here it's stretch okay and because of this stretch stimulus which is the stretch it from muscle spindle the impulse is carried by 1a and 2 fibers to coordinating center from coordinating center the alpha motor neuron this alpha motor neuron is basically innervating the effector muscle which is extrafusal fiber so afferent from these fibers uh, ultimately basically contract this outer layer which is extrafusal so in normal muscle contraction sense the stretch is sensed from intrafusal and contraction of extrafusal fiber contract in normal condition okay so as you can see here there are some gamma motor ending also present which are efferent fibers okay we'll see it later but for just monosynaptic reflex to be understood you should know this thing that these afferent fibers basically sense the stretch and ultimately alpha motor neuron is stimulated which contract extrafusal fiber that's how muscle contraction occur okay now we we know there are different reflexes when we do in practical examination we are taught a maneuver which is gendrastic maneuver so we when we twist our finger uh, we stretch like this and or we clench the teeth so in the both of these condition there is gendrastic maneuver this is called and alpha gamma coactivation occur which basically increase our uh, tension in muscle contraction whenever we are performing some reflexes if we are not able to elicit those reflexes so with these maneuver we can made the reflexes elicited okay so what is that so as i explained there are some fibers which are the gamma motor neuron which is supplying the intrafusal fibers 
okay so normally as you so in this image you should know this is spinal cord okay so intrafusal fiber this is the muscle spindle receptor part from muscle spindle the green color fiber are the efferent efferent fibers going and it's just synapsing on the black fiber which is the alpha motor neuron which is going to contract the extrafusal right extrafusal fibers so that's how normal muscle contraction occur along with that you can see a red colored now fiber which is the gamma motor neuron innervating the same intrafusal fibers so how as you can see the red color fibers is having innervation from descending fibers from higher centers so normally they have some low frequency discharge which is going to have some low frequency tone of muscle that's how at resting condition we have tone okay because of this gamma motor discharge okay but what is then alpha gamma coactivation so because of these manure gendrasic manure there is stimulation of higher centers stimulation from higher centers which is going to stimulate the gamma motor neuron now if gamma motor neuron is stressed or stimulated it basically stretch the muscle and as it stretches there is more firing of efferent nerve endings 1a and 2 okay which is again going to stimulate more alpha motor neuron so in this condition in this manure you can see the muscle is contracted not only because of extrafusal fibers but along with that intrafusal fibers also contract so that's why the tension is more in muscle okay because of this we are getting all the reflexes because of this manure because in that condition both intra and extrafusal fibers contracts normally only extrafusal fibers contract okay so that's all about alpha gamma coactivation you, one uh, more uh, term which you should know is uh, inverse stretch reflex fine inverse stretch reflex what is that is basically there are some at tendon level golgi tendon organ is basically innervated with one b fiber one b fiber so when it contracts is basically when muscle contracts or muscle stretches more than a level so it contracts more than enough okay the tendon are stretched so with more stretch of tendon one b fibers are stimulated which is going to inhibit the alpha motor neuron so that the muscle is, can be prevented from rupture okay so whenever there is muscle contraction the efferent fibers via one b fibers from golgi tendon organ here from tendon okay the efferent goes to the same center that is spinal cord and it innervate or inhibit as you can see here the sign is inhibition there is some interneuron it synapses on some interneuron which is going to inhibit the alpha motor neuron okay so basically it inhibit alpha motor neuron because of that muscle relax so when muscle contracts too much there are mechanism to relax it so that muscle rupture don't occur okay so this is a protective reflex inverse stretch reflex or golgi tendon reflex okay last is polys polysynaptic reflex so polysynaptic reflex as name shows polysynaptic so there are many synapses involved example is withdrawal reflex fine so whenever we touch any hot object or any sharp object we withdraw our hand like this because of some uh, muscle contraction right so how it occur basically normally so efferents how basically which are the efferent and which are the so as you can see it they here stimulus can be on skin or any tissue and then it's it's basically synapsing on some interneuron which is going to a uh, synapse on motor neurons and then there is some muscle contraction here in withdrawal reflex you can see the muscle contraction is it's not possible that it's only contracting only one muscle for example in other cases this is only a simple withdrawal reflex otherwise you can have other example for example one uh, one foot is basically placed uh, on by accident accidentally placed on some sharp object okay so we can fall in this condition fine so stimulus from leg it's going to synapse on some level on spinal cord so here, here you can see the stimulus is going via afferent the afferent can be cutaneous pain afferent or any afferent which type of stimulus is involved okay so it's going to 
synapse on various interneurons which are going to synapse on various other alpha motor neuron so to balance the posture basically it not only withdraw this lag but it uh, activate the anti gravity muscles and other muscles okay so basically extensors are inhibited flexors are stimulated and on the other leg response is reverse extensors are stimulated and flexors are inhibited okay so this is a type of polysynaptic reflex in which we can see at spinal cord level there are number of reflexes involved so that's why it's called polysynaptic reflex okay all the posture maintenance reflexes withdrawal reflexes are polysynaptic reflex okay so we have we have covered all the reflexes part not practical only theoretical part inverse stretch reflex the monosynaptic and polysynaptic reflex alpha gamma coactivation so that's all for today thanks for watching if you have any query you can mail me thank you so much